The transparency mask allows you to control transparency through the creation of a second layer, which is linked to whichever layer you currently have selected. This mask works by allowing you to control transparency or opacity through the value that you lay down on the transparency mask. So the purpose of using a transparency mask would be to non-destructively erase a layer. If we click on the transparency mask layer, you can draw on it, although you won't see anything happening. It'll look like you're erasing if you're using black, and if you're using white it'll look like you're bringing the image back but if you hold down alt and you click on the transparency mask you'll be able to see the value that you're laying down so one reason you might want to use a transparency mask is if you're not really sure you want to commit to erasing something and a lot of instances where you would use it is usually where you're fading something out into a distance um, and with the transparency mask you can always bring that back so if you go and you work on your project you're not relying on control z and potentially undoing a lot of work that you've already done or going too far and not being able to bring that information back. Now we can actually use a transparency layer in conjunction with a clipping mask because what a transparency mask does is it just gives you more control over the opacity. Think of it like an optional added functionality. The only reason each layer doesn't have a transparency channel by default when you create a new layer that you can you know edit on its own is because it just takes up space and you're not always going to need one. But adding a transparency mask doesn't change the way that it interacts with the other layers. So you can actually click this arrow right here to collapse it if you don't need to edit it anymore and then you can just use it or treat it like a normal layer so if I wanted to create a clipping mask you would just use Control shift G which is the shortcut where you can you know thumb through the menus and a clipping mask will work exactly like it always does and it'll take that top layer and ensure that it doesn't exceed the bounds of whatever shape you're using for the clipping mask and the reason I bring up clipping masks at all is that you might think well if I have a shape for a clipping mask and I erase some of it it's effectively hiding the layer above it, then isn't that what a transparency mask does? And on the surface, yes, that's what it looks like. But oftentimes, the clipping mask shape that you're using is not just a random shape. It's usually an object that you already have and that you want to not edit any further in a lot of cases. So by erasing that, one, you're destructively editing it, so you can't bring that back. And two, you can't use a clipping mask because you're already using one, right? So if you're using a clipping mask to control transparency, then you can't use it again again to map it to a shape that you might if you don't want to use that shape as the clipping mask. So a transparency mask basically just gives you this added functionality of being able to non-destructively edit a layer and bring something back and preserve information by simply hiding it instead of removing it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to comment down below, like the video, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this.